Hello and welcome back to the next part in my WD Red overview series where we're looking at the WD RX series and the AX series. Now, in this part, this is the one that probably a lot of you have been waiting for the most. We are looking at the RAID rebuild time on filled capacity drives. You may have noticed in previous videos, as mentioned in a few comments before, and for those of you that did watch the other videos, I saw the comment section on fire, we were utilizing less populated WD Red drives. I could go over the whole reason for that, but just look at the pinned comment on the previous videos uh, from a couple of weeks ago, and that should tell you a little bit more information about that. But in today's video, we're going to be looking at a couple of things. As I film this part of the video now, I am looking at four NAS drives. The first NAS is a Synology 918, which is populated with a mixed array of hard drives where we have a combination of RX older generation WD Red 4TBs and one WD AX drive. That's the newer generation WD Red, which does feature device, uh, sorry, drive managed shingled magnetic recording. And in today's video, we are looking at the RAID rebuild time. Now, although we're running four NASs, we're not really comparing them. We're going to be using all of them as isolated examples. We will at times be comparing these NASs like for like QNAP versus QNAP, but ultimately this is going to be functioning as four separate instances of RAID rebuild. So consequently you have to look at these results in that same way. But right now in this device here, this is a nearly fully um, populated device. In this we are using 95% so just over 10 TB of data is on this RAID array using SHR and of all of these drives which are a mixed array of drives we are going to be pulling one of these drives. We're going to be pulling one of the um, we're going to pull the AX drive and then we're going to reinstall that AX drive. Not the um, It will be the same drive but I am going to format the disk completely. Uh, on a separate PC uh, using a SATA connection, and then we're going to reintroduce this blank drive and reinitialize and let the, uh, the RAID rebuild just to see how well this copes with that. On our next NAS, we have a NAS that is fully populated with AX drives. I'm sorry about notifications and noises in the background. I'm not in my usual working environment today because um, of COVID or isolation, remote desktop, and stuff like that. So right now we've got these AX drives right here, a full RAID um, array using AX drives. And this one, we're once again going to be pulling that Bay 1 drive. It's an SHR, and we're going to be pulling the Bay 1 from this device. And once again, formatting that same drive and reintroducing it into the RAID. Next, we've got a QNAP, a TS-453BE. And on this NAS device, we are going to be utilizing exactly the same setup. And as you can see, this one is fairly well populated, as you can see. We've got nearly the entire 10 TB populated on this device. And once again, we are going to be pulling that drive. This is another mixed capacity NAS, which is, oh no, this is the, I should say, the full AX storage comparison. And in this AX1, which is, again, a RAID 5 array, utilizing full AX drives. So if we have a look, AX, 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 and AX and in that RAID 5 array. Finally, I'm gonna move that there. Finally, we're gonna use the RX mixture QNAP. And again, 453BE, uh, we are utilizing one AX drive and three RX older generation drives. And once again, we are gonna pull that drive in bay one, as you can see, have a look there. And again, the graphic here, seemingly not updated on this device. And we're gonna start pulling those drives to take a good look about what's inside. So if you look down here, there it says AX, and the rest of them say RX. So apparently that graphic needs a little bit of update in their QNAP. Not well done. So there's our RAID 5 array, and again, we're gonna be pulling Bay 1 from each of these NASes. Uh, you're probably gonna see some lots of alerts on screen, and from there, we are then going to reintroduce the drives that have been formatted, completely clean for reuse, and let the RAID rebuild commence. And what we're gonna be looking for is one, how long each NAS is going to take, to build that RAID, sorry about the background noise there. And we're also going to be looking at um, if the RAID completes at all. We're not gonna interact with the NAS too much when we've got the drive removed, largely because these are fully capacity, these are full capacity drives and these are Celeron powered NASes. As you can see, there's a little more capacity available in the, um, uh, I should say, mixed array 
of NAS there, but not a huge amount more, and there's still only 2 TB of a potential, um, just shy of 11 TB available. But without further ado, I'm just going to go to the other side of the room and start pulling drives in each array. So no doubt in the background you are going to slight you're going to start hearing beeps as all of these systems are now going to be reporting degraded raid volumes. So what we're going to do is get ready and kill that beep as you can see bay one is removed from my first synology. And, and there you hear the QNAP in the background there letting us know that there is a problem. And what we're going to do is I'm going to give it a minute or so and let that drive spin down because obviously once you remove a physical hard disk it all too often um, will still take a minute or two for the drive to completely cease its spinning. So what I'm going to do is um, fast forward on this video to these drives being completely formatted so I can reintroduce them into the array and rather than have you guys sitting around waiting for me to do it. So let's fast forward. Okay, so I've gone ahead, those drives have been removed, flashed, and are ready to be reintroduced into all four NASs. It's exactly the same NAS drive that was in each of them before. All of them are AX series drives, but they've all been completely formatted today. There's no resilvering going on here. This is a pure rebuild scenario. So I'm going to make a quick gesture to my colleague here, who's going to start introducing each NAS drive back into the NASs. I believe it's going um, Synology QNAP, Synology QNAP. So what we might do is give it a minute or so, and I'll refresh the pages. I believe uh, going on our previous experimentations, we did notice that the QNAP will automatically rebuild itself. Get ready. As you can see, the QNAP is a bit gobby. Um, it's just letting us know right now that it's been reintroduced. As you can see, the Synology has started noticing these drives. Uh, we'll make a quick note of the time there. It's 12.18 on Monday the 11th. And we're going to go ahead and repair this storage pool here. So we're going to go through them. As we can see, you can hear again. As you can see, the QNAPs will automatically rebuild themselves. So we're going to click next. We're going to start repairing the Synologies first because they need it to be actioned manually. And all of these will be using default rebuild i could have sped it up and used quick rebuild or rebuild priority but we're not going to do that in today's video we want to make sure everything set is to the default settings possible as you can see new reintroduced drive which hasn't been reinitialized and again there's the degraded raid that we are going to rebuild once again with an ax new generation w red drive introduce it here clicking apply moving forward we're then going to look into the QNAP. as you can see the new drive has been noted there we can go into the storage array. We can see there the RAID group rebuilding has started with a rebuilding at standard priority. And it's at 0.2% already complete. They are stating it's going to take six hours for this RAID rebuild. We'll leave that in the background. And we're going to head into the storage manager just to get some idea about how long this is going to take. As you can see, it's saying that the RAID rebuild is in progress. Right, so we're going to fast forward now to the completion of these individual RAID arrays to get some idea about how long each is going to take, and indeed if the RAID is successful. Now remember these were all fully populated NAS devices. Uh, say fully populated as close as possible, as you can see in the case of this Synology, the capacity was at the full 10.90 TB across the whole array. And we've introduced that new drive there, which is now going to start the consistency and rebuilding there of the brand new drive and what we're going to do is fast forward hopefully to tomorrow to see the completion of these raid rebuilds and see what we can garner from the information on these mixed drive raid rebuilding so let's fast forward to tomorrow okay so we fast forwarded a day and we are back on all four of these NASs. I'm pleased to say that all four of them completed their RAID rebuild and now, now all, uh, all the data is still intact. Although I will say that there was definitely differences in how long each one took. I'm filming this video around oh, just under 24 hours since the first part 
of this particular video. And as you can see right here, this is the mixed NAS. It's got three EX drives as mentioned yesterday, or in your case, a matter of minutes ago, and a RAID rebuild is completed. It's three RX drives and one AX drive. If we have a look at the notifications, we can have a look and see when it was completed. I believe this was the one that was completed just shy of last night. Let's have a look. Hopefully that notification will stop getting in the way. Have a look, click there, there we go. As we can see, it finished at 11.02 last night. If we move on to the next Synology, and again, all completed, all resynchronized, we can make our way. And this is where we started seeing a disparity. This RAID, re raid rebuild finished at 6.25 a.m. That is a huge difference between them, of around six to seven hours. Um, and it started at 12, so we are looking at, you know, a day and a half, I'm sorry, uh, three quarters of a day there. Now, if we move over to the Pure, uh, so that was the Pure AX series drive cell on the second Synology. If we go for the mixed QNAP, we can make our way into the storage logs there. And if we look at the storage logs, we can see that it began uh, around about um, uh, 12.18. That's when the rebuild started and ended at 8.36. And again, this is the NAS with the three um, older generation WD Red drives and uh, RX and one AX drive. And finally, we have the pure AX NAS that's nothing but the new WD Red drives with DMSMR. And we can see that it started at around 12, um, if we, go, we've got 12.41 here, and ended at just after midnight at 23. So again, it did take longer on the pure AX series drives, but the RAID rebuild did complete. Although I will highlight that there was mention of the file system needing cleaning on the second QNAP here. The Synology didn't log that, but the QNAP did. Unfortunately, that was a notification that happened in the background. Um, so I had to do um, a restart of the NAS and constitute a, a, um, a cleaning there of a cleaner file system. But let's have a look at the results there. Um, now, these on screen are the results from the first part of our test that we're using empty NAS drives. These are the ones where there was around about 50 to 100 gig of data, not much to play with, if I'm honest. And as you can see, in the case of the older generation drives versus the newer generation drives, in pure, all four exactly the same scenarios, both the newer generation drives built their RAID faster. Now, on both of those, you can see it was a standard RAID build. And if we look at the rebuild settings, and this was when we did a drive pull on both the WD older generation pure NAS Synology and QNAP and newer generation WD RED drives in pure NAS environments, you can see that the times were pretty comparable. You can see that in the case of the one drive pulling of these empty NASs, it was 8 hours 58 versus 9.5 and 8 hours 02 versus 8 hours 04, very similar. Now, if we take a look here, we can take a good look at the how much slower the AX drives performed in this environment. For a start, we can see that the mixed scenarios certainly took longer than the previous generation of rebuilds. So in the case of the mixed Synology, it took 10 hours, fully populated, versus 8 hours 58. Now, for a start, let's take a moment and appreciate that it was good that both of them, even em near empty versus full, the difference was only around an hour and a half. In the case of the QNAP, that was also mixed, it ended up 8 hours 02 versus 8 hours 18. So incredibly close, given that one of them had 10 terabytes of da data that needed to be rebuilt using the parity versus very little data overall so a very interesting development there but when we look at the um the pure ax drive so no mixing what we see here is a big big difference first we can look at how the ax drives in an empty raid compared with ax drives in a full raid and we can see that the difference was 8 hours 33 versus 18 hours 02 an enormous difference you know double what we saw from the synologies there. Double check the screen recording's happening, yes it is. On top of that, we can look at the QNAP, and the QNAP empty was eight hours, four minutes, but fully populated uh, was 11 hours, 42, and that is what I would have expected from a empty RAID rebuild versus a fully populated 
raid rebuild so it's quite surprising that we saw that there now the second thing to look at of course is how each of the nazis mixed versus non-mixed behaved so if we look at the synology nas here that was mixed with three of the old gen and one of the new gen drives we can see it took 10 hours versus 18 hours on the pure raid rebuild there so again 59.1 percent slower which is really disappointing if i'm honest and again that speed difference was carried over if we look at the qnaps there the qnap took eight hours 18 minutes on near empty um sorry 18 eight sorry eight hours 18 minutes on a fully populated mixed raid uh wd environment and in the pure one 11 hours 42 a 40.96 percent decrease in time um in performance so that is a huge degree slower overall and again not fantastic numbers i mean we are going to be doing one more video in this series where we're going to go through all of the results that we have garnered throughout all of these tests so far and i will be re-performing these tests in other ways now i'm going to keep these nazis up and running for a few more days i'm going to run a few minor tests that i might not run here on youtube because they might be too small to justify a video but I'm going to make these videos live now, so if you guys have got any questions or recommendations for other tests, bearing in mind that this hardware you're seeing on screen is pretty much all I can play with, so it's not like I can quickly get hold of eight more drives for you, if you can make recommendations in the comments, I'll try to get those uh, tests that you guys want into um, the background and get them all included in my complete overview and conclusion video to this series coming very soon. But I hope you guys have found this video helpful. This was even worse than I would have liked, if I'm perfectly honest, with regards to empty versus, um, f empty versus full. Particularly in the case of the Synology, I'm quite disappointed with that. But that's something I'm going to summarise in the conclusion. But otherwise, I'm going to stop things here. Uh, do let me know if you've got any things you want me to feature in this series. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed the video. Click subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you next time.